Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our Straight to the Point webinar series. My name is Dallin Garrison, and I'm an admissions counselor here at Emporia, my Kansas City area, but I love meeting all prospective students. Um, I actually have a few guests with me here tonight, so I'm excited to introduce them, and I'm going to bring them up on the screen with me. All right, I have Darcy Johnson here. She is the Assistant Director of Compliance and Communication. Dr. Kate Bergman, she's one of our academic advisors. Nick Robertson, the Senior Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. So thank you all so much again for joining. You're gonna to get to hear from all of them later. They're gonna share some awesome information with you. Um, before they start talking, I'm just gonna go over a few things. Um, tonight, we're gonna to do a quick recap of some things that we've talked about in the past. Um, talk about enrollment, our Res Life Showcase, advising and financial aid. So, um, first I'll start with happy spring. I can't believe that we're already almost into April, um, but even though we are getting into the end of the school year, I just want to say it is not too late for your students to apply. So if I have any parents on here that have any seniors in high school, um, you, as you can see on the screen, our application is free until March 31st. So if your student is interested in applying, go ahead and have them apply. Um, they'll save $30 on that application. And we're doing two scholarship drawings after this week. So if your student applies um, just for applying, they'll be entered to win a $500 scholarship. We do those drawings on Monday. So we'll have one next Monday and the following Monday after. Um, you can check for that scholarship drawing on our Instagram page, watch it live, see if your student wins. Um, it's not too late to apply for scholarships. Darcy will touch on that a little bit later, but um, one scholarship we're always giving out is the presidential and the GPA only scholarships. Um, those are scholarships based on the student's GPA for the GPA only and then for the presidential for their GPA and their ACT score. And then I wanna to touch on visiting campus. Um, so like I said, it's not too late to visit campus. Um, you have up until classes start to come check us out. If I have any parents on here, if you have a junior or even a sophomore or freshman, come see us, come see what um, ESU is all about. One of our big visits happening right now is our black and gold visit. Those happen on Friday and Saturday. Um, you can sign up on our website. Um, those are basically big group visit days where you can come check out campus, see the presentation, eat lunch for free. Um, those are a super fun way to get involved. And then another event I'm gonna touch on is our Res Life Showcase. So this is happening on April 10th. Um, what this event is, is you can come to campus with your student and get to see all of our residence halls. So this is one of the only events that we do on campus where you can actually see all of our residence halls. Um, you can answer questions about living on campus, get to meet other prospective students, we'll feed you lunch. Um, and then you can, like I said, come check out all those halls, optional with campus tour, and you can sign up for that on our website as well. So one of the really exciting things is enrollment is now open. We have our first enrollment event next week. Um, so students that need to enroll will come for a Hornet connection. Um, you can sign up for those on our website as well. Um, you'll get to come meet with various departments. So some of the people that you're hearing from tonight, you'll get to meet with them. And then a student will get to meet with their academic advisor. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and bring Kate on so she can talk about enrollment and academic advising. Hi, everybody. I'm part of the first year advising team. So um, when you first start at ESU, um, we have a first year advisor and it depends on your major. So if your student majors in art, music, theater, communication, speech, modern language, English, or elementary education. Um, that's me in the middle. <laughs> so I'd be their advisor their first year. Um, beside me is Becca McKenzie in the, in the little pictures there. Um, Becca advises all the students that have majors in um, the science related fields and Alex on the other side of me there on the front row um, does a business psychology uh, math uh, majors so you can see the list there um, Adam on the bottom row is our undecided advisor for first year and Cassie advisors are sociology, history, pre-nursing, social sciences. And then in the um, bottom right corner there is Kathy Landwehr. She's our fearless leader. She's our senior director for academic advising. So when students first start at ESU, they would be meeting with one of us on the first year advising team. And then um, they would transition um, 
after they are a sophomore, if they're progressing in their degree, then they transition to upper level advisors. And the upper level advisors then on our second page here are Katie Martin advises elementary education and Jess Schumann um, advises PE, health and human performance and sports leadership and recreation. Lindsay advises psychology. Uh, Jamie, there in the second row, is uh, the science and math upper level advisor. Emily is our art, music, theater, communication, and speech upper level. Uh, Trevor Kamina um, advises upper level English, modern languages, social sciences, sociology, and history. And then our school of business upper level is advised by Eli and Shelby. So um, the main thing I want to stress for um, your academic advisor is that um, we're your go-to place. If you're not sure um, where on campus, we don't want to give you the runaround for, um, you know, if you're not sure if it's a financial aid question or if it's registration or if it's cashiers, they're all located in Plum. And we are too. We're right inside the front door. Um, so we want to be your go-to place. So if we're like, well, if we can't answer your question for you, we can put you in contact. So we hear a lot of times students are like, well, I didn't know who to ask or I don't know where to go. So academic advisors are, are the ones that can help your students. So we want to make sure they know um, that they can ask us questions. We want to make sure they get on the right path, um, that we can give them those extra resources. Um, so some of our, our liberal arts and sciences advisors are all located in that same place, right inside the front door of Plum Hall. Um, and then some of our, we have the teacher's college um, upper level advisors and the, and the business. So there's a couple of places in campus, but we want to make sure you know that your academic advisor is your go-to place. So I would say ESU is nice because it's a smaller campus. You can get anywhere um, on campus in 10 minutes or less, um, but it can still feel kind of big um, when you have a question and you're not sure where to go. So we just want to make sure um, that your academic advisor can be your student's uh, support system and, and be a part of that. So um, some other things I wanted to, uh, we talk about your students being our advisees. So we're the, their academic advisors and then your students, depending on their major, are the advisees. Um, and, and when um, Dallin talked earlier about the Hornet connections, that's when we get to meet your students, sit down with them one-on-one, -on -one, um, maybe ask them, you know, are they a morning person if they have the flexibility, um, especially when they're first starting out? Maybe we can choose some of the later classes in the day uh, if that would help them succeed, especially their first semester or two. Um, and then if they need more time after the Hornet Connection, we're around all summer. You know, we're always there Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And they can email us. They'll get, they'll get our contact information when they come for the Hornet Connection. And then our normal appointments are 30 minute appointments. So the Hornet Connections, because we have lots of students coming in daily. Is it, it seemed it'll go a lot faster. Um, and so we'll have the opportunity to sign up for those longer appointments um, later too. So um, when they come to enroll with us at the Hornet Connection, it is just for fall classes. So it's um, just for the August through December classes. We'll meet again later in the semester after we touch base that first month and then um, meet with them to plan out spring. It, it'll go fast, but we're just going to be enrolling for fall when we first meet with them. Um, some of the things that we want to make sure while the, your students are still home with you is making sure that they get their transcripts sent to us. So especially um, like um, Dallin mentioned that our first Hornet Connection is next week. So obviously we're assuming they're going to graduate from high school, but we'll need proof of that, that final transcript sent to us um, with the um, graduation date, their final grades, and if they took any classes for dual enrollment. So like if they are taking some college classes, if they want college credit, even if those classes are on their high school transcript, if they want college credit, we'll need the transcript from that college or university. So we'll talk to them about it again at the Hornet Connection date, but just so that's kind of on your radar to make sure we get those final transcripts. We do have texting with our students so that we can hopefully um, send them quick reminders in case they have a quick question too. So we try to text, we email. Um, um, parents are welcome to email us too. The texting is usually for just for the students. Um, and then we try to touch base with uh, different classes, like I said, that they've already taken. Um, and we'll talk to them about their credit hours, assuming they want to be in, in full time. but. Um, the main thing we want to focus on is that 
we're part, an academic advisor is part of your student's support system and that we want to be your go-to place and help give them the help that they need so that they can succeed here at ESU. All right. Hi. Thank you so much, Kate. Um, as Kate mentioned, the academic advisors are here for your students. Um, they are awesome. They want to make sure that they succeed um, and help them to graduate. Um, another great program and service that we have here for our students is our financial aid department. Um, ESU really prides itself on making us an, an affordable institution for our students. Um, there's so many things that we do to make it affordable and to help our students. So I'm going to bring on Darcy to talk about some of those financial aid pieces. All right, thanks, Dallin. Um, so I'm Darcy, I work in the financial aid office. I primarily focus on um, satisfactory academic progress, compliance, communication, and training. Um, but today I wanna to talk to you really about the beginning of your student's financial aid journey. And that starts with FERPA, or the uh, Family Educational Rights Privacy Act. And under FERPA, up to this point, you've had access to your students' educational records while they're in K-12. But as soon as they hit college, that access stops. So under FERPA, we cannot release any specific financial aid information to anyone but the student unless they grant proxy access to you or whoever they want us to be able to talk to. Um, so there is on our website, more information on FERPA and instructions on how your student can set up that proxy access. They actually do that through the Hornet 365 portal. And so they will need to follow all of the steps to set up proxy if they want us to be able to talk to you about their financial aid without um, them present. So if you call our office and we're like, I'm sorry, you don't, your student hasn't set up proxy for you. We can't give you any specific information. Um, that is because it's a federal law that prevents us from sharing that information until the student has given us written permission. And you can see the link there that will direct you to more information about that proxy access. Um, so in the financial aid office, we receive a student's FAFSA. And so the 2023-2024 FAFSA is the one that the student will need to have completed for this upcoming school year. It's going to consider them for federal financial aid through the government for summer 23, fall 23, and spring of 24. And so if they haven't filled that out yet, they definitely need to get that done. Um, it's been open since October, um, but it will remain open so they can fill that out at any time. It will use 2021 tax and income information for both the student and the parent and the parent's current spouse. And the FAFSA will walk through which parent's information should be used um, if the student is in a blended family. And so I mentioned that we're gonna use, it's gonna ask for 2021 tax and income information. We're now in 2023. So there's a lot that could have changed in your finances since 2021. If you have had a loss or reduction in income or any other um, situation that's drastically changed the family's current financial situation, when you fill out that FAFSA, you must still use 2021 tax and income information. However, there is a process called professional judgment that you can reach out to the financial aid office and ask about. Um, there's a form that the student will fill out to request it. And that allows our director to review your family's financial situation. She looks at those on a case-by-case -case basis and determine if she can make updates to the FAFSA to more accurately reflect the family's current financial situation versus what it looked like in 2021. So if you feel like that has is a circumstance that you've had and that applies to you, just reach out to our office and we'll be happy to talk you through that process. When the student fills out their FAFSA, um, we will receive it and process it. We may need more information from them. Uh, the Department of Education may have selected them for a process called verification. That doesn't mean they did anything wrong when they filled out their FAFSA. It just means that we have to get some more information from them to review that information and make sure that all the data on the FAFSA is accurate. So we cannot create a financial aid offer for the student 
until we have those required documents. Sometimes it may be that the student didn't list, list their social security number or their date of birth on their application with ESU, um, but we that information is on the FAFSA and we need to make sure that we're matching up the FAFSA data with the right student in the system. So we may need a copy of the driver's license or the social security number if what's in ESU system doesn't match what came in on the FAFSA. So those are gonna be the more common um, pieces of information that we'll request from your student. And so when we get that FAFSA, we will process it. We'll notify them at the email address that they listed on the FAFSA, which should also be the one that they use to set up their FSA ID or federal student aid ID that they use to sign the FAFSA and let them know either that they have a financial aid offer or that we need more information. They can log on to Hornet 365 on the students page under View Financial Center. There's a link for My Financial Aid and that is where they're going to log in and look to see if we need any more information, which would be listed as outstanding requirements or um, if they have a financial aid offer. When your student comes for Hornet Connection, we will have a financial aid status letter for them. So it will have that list of requirements if we still need anything. If we don't and we've been able to create a financial aid offer, that will all be listed on there as well. We also offer one-on-one -on -one meetings during Hornet Connection. So at the end of the day, after your student is done enrolling, you and your student can come meet with us one-on-one -on -one and um, discuss that financial aid offer more and ask any questions that you have about that. Um, our office does not do billing. So um, when you look at a student's financial aid offer and you see cost of attendance listed on there, that is an estimated cost of attendance that we use to determine how much financial aid a student can receive for the year. It's not what they're actually going to owe to ESU because as I said, we don't do billing. Billing is handled by cashiers and student accounts and that bill will come to the student in mid-July if they're enrolled at that point in time. And so it, it then you would be able to see what they owe and could take action on any loans if the student decided that they needed to borrow those to help pay for that semester. Uh, Dallin mentioned scholarships. Uh, as she mentioned, the admissions office does the awarding of the GPA and presidential scholarship and they notify our office if your student should be receiving it. And if they are, then we will add it to their financial aid offer. So you may not see it on there now, but if admissions notifies us later that the student's eligible, we get that added um, when we're notified. Um, the same goes for departmental scholarships. So if your student is a math major and they're getting a scholarship from the math department, um, we don't actually determine who's eligible for those. That department tells us which student should be receiving it, and then we revise their financial aid offer to get that added on there. There is a scholarship portal on our website. So if you go to emporia.edu slash finaid slash scholarships, then um, maybe emporia.edu slash scholarships. Now that I think about it, I apologize. Um, but you can your student can log into the scholarship portal, complete the general application for 2324, and that will match them with scholarships in the database. That they may not that they may be eligible to apply for. Some of those may require a separate application. And if it does and it's on their to-do list, then they should go ahead and fill out that additional application um, to apply for that scholarship. The scholarships have varying deadlines. Several scholarship deadlines have already passed. Um, there may still be some that are open with the scholarship deadlines that are approaching soon. So I definitely recommend that they check that out in the very near future. Additionally, make sure that they're looking for local scholarships. Have them talk to their high school counselor and see what area scholarships they're eligible to apply for. If they're a member of a religious organization or a club, see if there are scholarships through that organization um, or if your employer offers scholarships for dependents of their employees, um, your student might be able to apply for a scholarship through your employer. So definitely lots of places 
but you can look for scholarships as well. Um, our office, we are here to help. As Kate said earlier, um, we're also open Monday through Friday, eight to five. We'll be here all summer and you can reach us at 620-341-5453 or finaid at emporia.edu. Um, so feel free to reach out to us when you have questions um, and make sure, have your student grant proxy access if they choose to do so, so that we're able to talk to you about their financial aid. All right, thank you so much, Darcy. Um, as she mentioned, if you have questions, feel free to reach out. That is what they're there for. Um, so the last program that I'm going to touch on is a program that students can um, apply for. It is not something they have to do. Uh, we know that coming to college can be a big step and a big transition, especially for maybe first generation students um, or students who just feel really nervous. So um, I'm going to bring Nick on to talk about our bridge program. This is an amazing program that students can get involved in um, and Nick can tell you all about it. Thank you so much. So yes, our bridge program is a pretty new program. This will be the second year that we're running it. And it's really me meant to help students as they transition into college. So if a student applies and is part of the program, they get to move in a week early um, to the residence halls. And so they move in this year on August 13th, which is a Sunday. And then starting that Monday for five days, they get to spend time with a bunch of folks on our campus to really connect with resources as well as to connect with other participants. So part of the hope with this program is that students are able to connect with some other students and kind of build a cohort. Um, the other piece to that is that they will live on that same residence hall the entire year together. So we have a bridge floor in the residence halls. And so again, they get to kind of build that relationship. Um, folks that went through it last year, students, we still see them, you know, just yesterday I saw a couple of them hanging out together. They're very close and um, often study together and things like that. So our hope is for students to just get to know other students and kind of go through something pretty intensive in one week of spending a lot of time together, meeting resources and things. Um, but then the other piece is really just to help them be ready to transition to college. So we have different folks from career services, financial aid, advising, coming in and talking to the students so that they, one, kind of recognize and know a face, but also understand what resources are available. Um, and so my office, the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, runs that with our TRIO Student Support Services, which is a federally funded program that serves low-income students, first-generation students, and students with disabilities. And then our diversity student programming also helps with that. So it's a great way for your student to be able to get connected to our offices, um, again, for resources throughout the year, but also for things like internships and, and um, positions, student worker positions. So there's a lot of connection to, again, just to try to help set them up um, for success. So that entire week, we spend about five hours a day with them together doing group projects. We have current students who lead groups, so they also get to connect with students um, who are already here at ESU. And we have some first generation students come and do a panel. So there's a lot of programming in that first week. Um, and then we also take them to the entire campus wide orientation together so that again, they're hopefully engaging in some of those things because they have other people they know um, at that orientation with them. And so we've found some really great success with that. If you want your student to look more into that, you can go to student life, um, emporia.edu slash student life slash bridge program, and they can apply for that. It is also available for students who are not living in the residence halls. So if they're living at home with you um, or somewhere else not on campus, they can participate for that week. They just wouldn't live um, on that floor for the rest of the year. And so we wanted to make sure we kept it open for folks, even if they're living um, off campus. So again, if your student's interested in that, definitely have them check it out and apply. Um, they get the entire week paid for as far as the residence halls, um, food for that week, and all of that is completely paid for for them. So they get to move in a week early, which is kind of nice to not have to go through the move-in process at the same time. Um, and they get to know other students and get to know a lot of our staff here on campus and faculty so that they make some connections. All right. Thank you so much, Nick. Um, so as you heard tonight, we have so many great opportunities for our students, so many programs, um, and everyone here at Emporia State, we're really just here for your students. We're here for you. Um, so any way that we can help, please reach out and let us know. Um, I'm just going to end with a few closing thoughts. Please don't forget that our application is free until March 31st. Um, even if your student is still on the fence about coming to Emporia State, have them apply, have them get admitted, um, because they can't enroll until they're admitted. So if they do make that decision, they're already admitted and they can go and sign up for a Hornet connection. Um, 
All of this information is on our website. You can go back and watch our parent webinar on our landing page, um, watch this recording. You can also find all of the contact information for everyone that spoke today if you do have any specific questions. Um, but I believe that is all I have for you. So again, thank you to my guests for joining um, and sharing all of your great information. And thank you to everyone who logged on to watch tonight.